have to provide them with um, the cleaning and disinfection and maintenance for three pieces of equipment from clinic lab and environmental health. Um, they will also be uh, asking, continue to ask us questions during that day that we will have to be responding to until 4 p.m. of that day. The team is comprised of uh, five members as uh, of a multiple disciplinary team and their peer volunteers. So they're made up of a public health administrator, public health nurse, uh, generally environmental health director, um, a board of health member, and the site visit coordinator. Um, we have chosen to do uh, the hybrid site visit. And what that means is that two of the members, the site visit coordinator and the lead site visitor or administrator will be with us on site that day. Um, the other three members will be joining by Zoom, but they will be on Zoom throughout the day working with the site visit coordinator and uh, administrator. Um, so the site visit is really used to clarify and verify our documentation showing that we're in compliance with the benchmark and activities. The schedule includes an entrance uh, conference at the beginning of the day. And then during the day, the site visit team will be looking at documentation and the personnel record review, as well as the policies, uh, and possibly providing us with additional questions. Um, and there will be a facility tour of, of about an hour that will include our dental van, which will be on the premises. Um, there will also be interviews with the health director, um, the board of several board of health members, and the directors of environmental health and nursing director. And then at the end of the day, there will be an exit conference. Um, this just shows our uh, visit schedule for the day. This will change a little bit. Uh, they will be providing us with the Zoom link and, um, and there may be some, a little bit of changes with regard to our conference rooms, but basically this is the setup for the day. So there, they arrive at 8.50, and um, they're here till 5 uh, p.m. that day. And as you can see, the Board of Health uh, interviews will take place between 12 and 1, 12.30 and 1 p.m. on the 25th. Uh, so during this facility tour, this uh, allows them to familiarize themselves with the agency's environment. Um, in the past, the facility tour was um, a lot more important because many of the activities uh, were being observed by the site visit team. Currently, we have to provide some of that documentation um, prior to the site visit, but they still will be doing the site visit tour and they can be looking for uh, overall cleanliness of our facility, our overall security and our computer security, our signage, um, our privacy protections, um, our accessibility for persons with disability and, and limited English proficiency, um, and our policy accessibility. During that time, they can ask questions of the staff while they're on that tour. And again, they will also be touring that dental van that we'll have uh, on the premises so they can access that. Um, so again, they'll be doing these interviews, uh, as I mentioned, with the health director, several board of health members, and the directors for environmental health and nursing. And the purpose of that is to just ascertain the agency understanding uh, and roles with respect to the agency. For the board of health interviews, um, the purpose will be to look at assessing the level of involvement um, of the board with the health director and health department um, to look at the board members knowledge of their roles and responsibilities um, to look at the board of member tra uh, training um, discuss any process for hiring and evaluating our health director um, describing the county's public health priorities and how they're determined looking at uh, board functions as well as board's legal responsibilities and um, looking at the relationship between the Board of Health and the Health Director, uh, as well as looking at the relationship between the Board of Health and the Board of County Commissioners. Um, it has been suggested 
uh, I, I have just recently talked with our site visit coordinator and she also reminded us to make sure that there is a time usually at the end of an interview to where they will just ask if we have any additional information we want to provide or have any questions and uh, she said this is a good time for us to provide any things that we're proud of at the health department um, as well as we can talk about any challenges that we have and how that we're meeting those challenges or working on meeting those challenges um, because she said they do like to hear what uh, work we've been doing and what we're, we're proud of that we've accomplished. Um, so as far as the Board of Health is concerned or the governance, there is the benchmarks from 34 to 41 uh, are um, actually regarding the Board of Health. And um, as you can see here, the benchmark for 34 looks at the board's exercise of its authority to adopt and enforce rules uh, for protecting the public. Um, 35 looks at assuring a fair and equitable adjudication process. Uh, 36 looks at training regarding service on the board. 37 is about assuring the development, implementation, and evaluation of health department services and programs to protect the public. Um, 38 talks about the Board of Health's participation in establishing the public health goals and objectives. 39 looks at assuring the availability of resources to implement the essential services. Uh, 40 is about the, ad, the board advocating in the community on behalf of public health. And 41 is promoting the development of public health partnerships. So those are the specific activities that are related to the board. Finally, I've provided some um, resources for you. Um, the accreditation does have, or it does have a website. Um, so you can go to that website and get um, all the information that we have available. And that includes the actual HDSAI document that we've submitted. So you could actually see that document, not, not what we've submitted, but the document itself to see um, what they're asking us to provide. And um, we can also, um, they also have the entire process for the accreditation there. And we've also developed a employee quick reference guide that um, if it would be helpful, we can also provide to you um, that we've had uh, provided for the employees and just recently working on updating. Um, so I'll be happy to answer any questions regarding accreditation. I may have missed this in the very beginning. Did you say whether the Board of Health interviews are in person or virtual? I did not. <laughs> the, the interviews for, for everyone for can be either uh, by Zoom or they can be uh, at the health department. Um, the way they've got it set up is that um, we're going to be having set up as a conference room uh, on the third floor will be set up um, where they will be in that room with the Zoom with, so that all the members are actually there. And um, you can choose to either Zoom in or you can actually come and, um, and go to that room and actually have your interview. The only one who can't do that is our environmental health director. And that's because two of those interviews are happening at the same time. Um, the interview with with the Board of Health, I mean, with the Environmental Health Director as well as the Nursing Director. So the Nursing Director could actually go into the room and interview, but the Board of Health member will have to zoom in uh, for that interview. I mean, not the Board of Health, the uh, Environmental Health Director, but the Board of Health uh, interviews can take place by Zoom. And are they done individually as a group? I've never done it before, so that's why I'm asking. Um, generally, they've been done as a group. Um, we, okay. we have to require, there's two, we have to have two members at least. Okay, uh, so that, that was my third question. Do we, since it's 13 days away, right? Mm -hmm. Do we have, uh, should we figure out what our calendars are and see who can come? Dr. Orto, no worries. We've already got our designees, our illustrious oh, chair, vice chair are going to take one for the team. Okay, that's all that's all I needed to know. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Rod.
And in addition to um, Dr. Jackson and I, others can join, right, Director right. Jenkins? That is correct. Okay. Others can yeah. join if you so choose. <laughs> Are there any other questions? It will be a long day, but um, I, you know we've had to prepare ahead of time. So uh, hopefully this new process with uh, using the dashboard will be helpful, um, especially with regard to answering questions that come up for the site visit. Michelle, we can get you to stop sharing your screen. We can kind of go back into regular mode. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, if I may, I just want to uh, acknowledge um, Rochelle and Antrell and the rest of the accreditation team for their hard work. Uh, it's a lot that goes into uh, gathering uh, 147 intimate details that, uh, you know, it's, it's not easy. And um, I'm actually speaking as a former uh, agency accreditation coordinator for Cumberland County, um, having helped them go through initial public health accreditation. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of work, but as Rochelle has indicated um, through technology and uh, just us being Durham, um, I, I truly do feel confident in saying to this board that uh, we're ready and uh, we are anticipating good results, uh, but we're not done. Um, Local public health accreditation is nice, but we're, we're really aiming for national public health accreditation. So that's the goal. And it's always, it's always good to have a goal to shoot, but very thankful for the team and the collective effort for the entire health department, because as Rochelle said, it is going to be a very long day. Yep. I don't envy you, <laughs> but I will be available with bells on. So thank you for that. That helps us a lot. So I'm almost looking forward to it. Almost. Russia, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you very much for that. Because I don't think any of us have been, I guess I've been on the board for a while. I just don't remember. I guess it's always been the chair and the vice chair that um, that spoke with them. So we were never really asked to, to do so. And that, that's fine. All right, great. Well, thanks again for that. Thank you very much. Oh, so, okay, agenda item number seven, public health vacancy report. Um, we're still stable and we're still in the teens. So we haven't gotten any worse. We're not in those 20s and 30s and 40%. Um, so I imagine recruitment is still going on and most of your hiring is needed. And Yes, ma'am, it's actually been a good week and talking to our personnel services, um, uh, uh, individual Donna Murphy, she did uh, opine today that uh, this week felt different because we had so many people coming in uh, to include Micah and, and many others, some school health nurses. So, um, you know, I think we're on a positive trend right now. Okay. All right. Great. Great. New year, new us. Okay. In the NOV report, looks like there's still pretty good movement on that. Does environmental health want to comment or attorney Wardell? Yes, we are making some headway on a number of those um, number of those cases. Uh, if you uh, look at the list, you'll see things uh, migrating from red to yellow to green. Uh, we've got a few in the yellow category uh, that I anticipate will go to green fairly soon. Um, I'm just encouraged that we're not getting a lot of new uh, cases uh, going on to the NOV list, which is really good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, because uh, typically these things go in waves. Uh, we've only got one right now that's in litigation. Uh, and so it's, it's sort of up in the air as to how that's going to go. Uh, they always go our way and we eventually win. Uh, it's just a matter of how long it'll take. Uh, but we have one that is active uh, in the courts right now. Uh, and we have several that we are uh, sort of working with the property owners to uh, rectify the problem. So uh, I'm, I'm really encouraged. Uh, uh, like I always say, you know, the folks in environmental health do a lot of things that we sort of take for granted. And they are really skilled. 
old uh, uh, folks and they work really hard. Um, I know Chris couldn't be here this evening, uh, but, um, you know, I, I enjoy working with them and they always give me everything I need to go forward when I have to take a case uh, to court. So uh, kudos to them for working really hard on this uh, on this report and getting these matters resolved. So uh, we're definitely going in the right direction. Yeah, it seems so. Yeah. And I like that color, that template. Yeah, it's helpful. Yeah. All right. And the health director's report. So you all continue to do really good work out there. I wish I could uh, comment on every single thing in that report, but it's good work. But the one that caught my eye this, this time was environmental health and that um, reusable to-go containers and having actually received national rec recognition for doing that because according to what I was reading, Durham is one of the few, very few cities in the country that have such a program. So, and it seems like they reached out to us and it seems like we have a pretty good one. So any comments from the health director or environmental health about that program? I do know that Chris couldn't be here, but Chris um, okay. Chris did mention um, when he pitched the idea to me several months back, um, I thought it was certainly um, in line with the county's, um, you know, thrust to be sustainable and to really um, educate the public uh, on 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 ways to you know recycle and to, to really protect the planet. So um, you know, a little slow going uh, to be honest with you, Board of Health to to get it off the ground. But once it's gone, or once it launched, it was uh, it's been successful thus far. Okay, great. Uh, on that note, one other thing I wanted to make the board aware of: uh, there is a discussion between uh, the city and the county. Uh, on a potential um, plastic bag, reusable plastic bag fee program where there would be a 10 cent uh, fee for using plastic bags. Uh, it is still in the uh, infancy stages, uh, but there is a significant push um, by the uh, Duke Environmental Health uh, uh, Law Center uh, and uh, Don't Waste Durham to actually get that uh, approved and to get an ordinance in place. The only other place that has um, uh, an ordinance that even addresses that is Buncombe County uh, in Asheville. And, and so <laughs> we would be the second if in fact we, we chose to do that. Um, and there, there are a number of loopholes to, to, to jump over and administratively, there are a number of things that would need to be done over at the city. Uh, but I just wanted to put that on your radar that that is something that's out there. You may hear about it um, if you are in tune with uh, the matters that come before the, uh, the board. So if you have any interest in anything like that, um, just keep your ears open. Uh, Rod, I think you may be aware of it as well. Uh, so uh, just to put that out there for, for our folks that are in interested in sustainability issues, that is something that uh, that is going to be coming up for consideration by both the city council and the board of county commission. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you for that information. Okay. Okay. All right, great. So agenda item number eight committee reports. And this is one I've been waiting for, nomination committee. There we go. No, you got to serve for another month. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is your last, your last official act as a board member, uh, Spence. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, I, was I'd like to thank uh, Josh Brown and Dr. Braithway for serving on the nominating committee. And first of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Jackson for serving as our chair this year. She will be rotating off her leadership role, but will remain on the board. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Braithway also for serving as vice chair. Um, because of other obligations, uh, she is rotating out of a leadership role and also, but will remain as a member of the board. But 
very pleased to announce uh, the nomination committee, Dr. McDougal for chair and Dr. Rea for vice chair. Yeah. Those sound good to me. And I, I assume they have agreed to, um, to have us vote them into, into those positions. And I just like to say it's, it's been, looking back, it's been a great chairmanship, the time that I've served as chair. I learned and grew so much as chair. And I would continue, except I'm on a few boards and I'm chair of another one and it was just too much. <laughs> I'm trying to be retired. So otherwise I would, I would try to stay another year, but I, I need to um, lighten my load just a little bit and, and finish out the other chairmanship that I'm also doing. So, but I think we've got a great slate, um, but during our voting process, we will entertain any nominations from the floor. Okay, hearing none. So we've heard the report from the nominating committee. We have Dr. Roger McDougall um, as chair and Jean Ray as vice chair. And I said, I know that you all have agreed to serve and thank you very much for your willingness to serve. And so we will proceed with the vote. We'll start with um, vice chair's position, Mr. Jean Ray. And if there are no other nominations from the floor, we'll take a road call vote on uh, my vice chair position, Jean Ray, Dr. Ray. So move. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Roll call vote. Dr. Jackson. Yes. Dr. Mi Dr. Miller. Yes. Dr. McDougall. Yes. Mr. Curtis. Yes. Dr. Brightway. Yes. Dr. Orto. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Commissioner Alarm. And Mr. Gregorio. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Congratulations, Dr. Ray. Thank you for Thank agreeing you guys to serve. Very much. Yeah, that Thank vice chair position is a uh, is a pretty big job as, <laughs> as, as well. So, but the, I guess the good news for you all, maybe it's good news, I don't know, but Dr. Uh, uh, Braithway and I will still be on the board, just not in those positions. So reach out anytime for anything. All right, so Dr. Ray is our new vice chair. Next, we'll vote on our chair, and that's Dr. Roger McDougall. Are there any nominations from the floor? All right, hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. So moved. Need, need a motion. Oh, I'm sorry, motion. I'll Don't make a motion myself. to close so the nomination. The chair. <laughs> but I, still, I will still be for officially the chair through the end of the month. That's Jim Miller. I make a motion to close the nominations and proceed to voting. Second. second. Okay, it's been moved and second. Now roll call vote. <laughs> Dr. Jackson. Yes. Dr. Miller. Yes. Mr. Curtis. Yes. Dr. Brightway. Yes. Dr. Orto. Yes. Dr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Commissioner Alon. And Mr. Gregorio. Yes. Thank you. All right. Motion carries. Congratulations, Dr. McDougall. Thank you. Our new chair. Yeah. And Dr. Ray, our new vice chair. Thank you so much. Looking forward to working with you all. Thank all you. Right. I think that was I think our only committee. Team. I'm sorry. Someone said. Sorry. Something. I just. I said. I think they're a great. This will be a great team. Oh yes, yes, yes. I'm quite excited. I wanted to uh, I wanted to thank everyone on the nominating committee uh, for your confidence uh, in myself and Dr. Ray, and we hope to maintain the high level that our current chair and vice chair have achieved this past year. So thank you, board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be a great year. It's going to be a great year. Okay. Any. Um, Old business. 
I just want, I want to put out there again, we, um, with Spence now leaving too, so we have two openings on the board. One has been open for a while, so probably a couple of years now, the optometrist position, which historically has been tough to fill. And as is the engineer position that Spence is in right now and is leaving. So if you all know anybody, if you know somebody who knows somebody, <laughs> please put out your feelers for amongst friends and colleagues that uh, this is a great board to serve on. It's a great community involvement. So we really need an engineer and an optometrist. And actually the, the um, statutes in Bordeaux, you can chime in or correct me if I'm seeking out a turn, but after however long we want to wait and we can't find anybody, we are allowed to fill those with um, community members. That's so great. Spence is just now leaving. So we won't worry about that so much, but the optometrist one has been open for a little while. So maybe we'll have further discussions about that, whether or not we wanna open it up to um, a community person, because it's, it's been a minute now, we haven't had anybody. Right. Okay, so we are down to our, our new business. And this is always a fun place to be because usually it means that we're getting some money. <laughs> So there are five budget amendments. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, for your consideration, we first have a budget uh, amendment, uh, which is really for the approval of uh, the Matthew Specialty Vehicles contract supplement for new for the new mobile medical unit, totaling sixteen thousand four hundred and sixty dollars. Uh, this, these funds are actually coming from uh, COVID funds that we already have in existence, but uh, in order to, uh, to, to purchase a graphic package and installation of poor connections, uh, we need this uh, to be approved. So again, that, uh, that is something that we are eagerly awaiting. Um, last estimates had toward the fall where the mobile medical unit would be uh, available. And uh, we are certainly looking forward to reaching every nook and cranny within Durham in order to extend our bandwidth uh, to provide that care that our underserved populations need. The second um, budget amendment is to recognize $44,125 from the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Public Health Epidemiology Section and Communicable Disease Branch. Uh, this is another uh, win Again, this is gonna support local health department, HIV and syphilis partner notification capacity through the creation of an additional DIS or disease intervention specialist position. Uh, so again, the goal is to reduce uh, the spread of HIV and STDs. Uh, so we are delighted to receive this uh, these funding. And I think it does, uh, it's worth noting to this board that um, you know this was uh, through us really reaching out to the state and letting them know uh, that you know we have the capacity and the capabilities of doing it, and uh, they certainly took us up on that offer. The third uh, budget amendment is again uh, to recognize three thousand five hundred and sixty-seven dollars uh, from uh, NCDHHS Division of Public Health Women, Infants, and, Ch and Community Wellness Reproductive Health Branch. Uh, this is just additional funding for Title X funding uh, for the for the health department. Uh, of course, uh, this allows us to purchase uh, some additional family planning um, supplies and methods. So again, uh, we look forward to receiving these funds. Uh, we are also recognizing uh, through budget amendment uh, $500 from the Center of Black Health Equity. And uh, I'm delighted to, uh, to, to announce this. Again, this is uh, funds provided uh, by this, uh, this outfit in order to further the health department's work with the Men's Health Council under the leadership of Joyce Page, who does a fantastic job uh, with promoting and organizing uh, that group of men. And our uh, incoming chair is no stranger to the Men's Health Council. He does participate in the walks that we have on Saturday. So this is something that uh, we are looking forward to. And last but not least, the one that we added was a budget ordinance amendment to recognize $83,913.13 from the Duke University Health System. Uh, these grant funds will be used uh, for the Partnership for Healthy Durham's Physical Activity, Nutrition, and Food Access Committee, 
Uh, they plan to host a number of community cafe meetings and town halls and listening sessions and uh, possibly to compensate community members for their work in the partnership. And I do know that our Population Health Division Director, Marissa Mortaboy, this is uh, an initiative that she's truly been passionate about. And uh, it's delightful to see it start to come to fruition. <laughs> Madam Chair, that is all I have in terms of budgeting. Okay, great. Any questions or comments regarding those budget amendments? Uh, Director Jenkins, I do have a, a question. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for that breakdown. Uh, for the first um, uh, budget ordinance amendment for the mobile medical unit, could you just um, go a little bit more into what is needed for a graphics package and installation of port connections? What was that entail? I'll do my best not to be as technical, but I do know that the graphic wrapping package is basically us being able to outfit the outside of the mobile medical unit uh, with probably a very nice design uh, that really reflects well on the Durham County Department of Public Health. And of course, the ports and everything uh, has to do with the IT connections needed in order for us to really be able to uh, have the connectivity needed to provide that care. Gotcha. Thank you. I'm sorry if I missed this. Was the mobile medical unit um, is that, do we already have that under our ownership or leadership? Oh, uh, no, we, we, uh, we are in the process of purchasing it. I, I believe that we, um, we may have initiated that, Mr. Gregorio, right before you came on board. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's been a minute. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Yeah. It's been. And we're also purchasing from Matthew's specialty vehicles? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and this particular budget, um, Ordinance. It, it, it's just for the, the installation and I assume the new equipment, but it, it would, would maintenance need to be involved? That, that, that sounds rather technical. So I just want to make sure that we're... Uh, I think uh, it's all inclusive. So technically, okay. this, this covers it all. Okay, great. Thank you. That's all I wanted to ask. Appreciate okay, it. No worries. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Was that the last one? Was that five? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So you've heard all the um, about all the additional money coming our way because you know I like to say, let your light so shine and people will give you money. All right. So if there's no further dis discussion, I'll entertain a motion to approve the five budget amendments. Motion to approve. Second. Right. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Roll call vote. Dr. Jackson? Yes. Dr. Miller? Yes. Dr. McDougall? Yes. Mr. Curtis? Yes. Dr. Brightway? Yes. Dr. Orto? Yes. Dr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Commissioner Alarm? Yes. And Mr. Google. Mr. Gregorio? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Motion passes. Oh, agenda items for our next meeting. Um, I guess one thing off the top, and this wouldn't be a, a, a long discussion, is just a summary or an overview of how the accreditation went, because we'll be two weeks removed from that, about two weeks removed from that. We would be happy to provide that to you, Madam Chair. And for the board's consideration, um, we have been asked uh, to present this board with um, the final summarization of our strategic plan, uh, oh. which is scheduled to go from 2023 to 2027. Okay. All right, great. So yeah, those are two pretty good ones and that'll that'll take some time. So we good with those. Anybody have any other things that, thing that they might want to hear about next meeting? Okay. Any informal discussion? We already talked about spins. <laughs> and I think I've already said, if I haven't said, I'm gonna say it again. Um, thank you all for supporting me as chair. Thank you. you. You don't know what you can do until you uh, are in it and are doing it because I would have never thought that I could have been chair. <laughs> so thank you for your support and for your belief and for your hard work and dedication and always being engaged. That was very important. Everybody was so engaged. We never had to try to track anybody down and where is this? No, no. Y'all have just been a great board to work with this year. So 
I will still be here. I look forward to continue working on this board. I have another couple of years left, I think. Um, so I'll be around a little while longer. So thank you all. And thank you to our new chair and vice chair. So you certainly have, I think I can speak for everyone. You have all of our supporters. We continue forward. So thank you for agreeing to serve. All right, that's all I have. It's the new year. It's gonna be a great year. Looking forward to all the wonderful things that we're gonna to continue to do in the community. Let's keep moving forward. Madam um, Chair, we have two people who have their hands up. Okay. Okay, uh, um, Commissioner Alum and who's the other one? Oh, okay, um, Attorney Wardell. Commissioner Alum. Yes, thank you. Uh Chair Jackson, sorry for being late, everyone. But um, and this may have already been discussed while I was uh, not on the meeting. But just wanted to give an update from the county side. Uh, we've been having discussions. We had uh, the Bulls Initiative uh, leaders come and give us an update about their work for workforce development and recruitment. Uh, and one of the things that you know I brought up, and I think I spoke with the county manager about it yesterday, day before yesterday. And our one-on-one -on -one is trying to find a way for the Bulls Initiative to start looking into, you know, they've been doing workforce development into the companies that are coming to the Triangle and coming to Durham, but to start doing workforce development investments into Durham County vacant positions, especially the public health uh, vacant positions. So working with Durham Tech to create uh, some sort of pipeline is what uh, I've talked to the manager about us doing where we can support students who are in Durham Tech. Uh, we're still figuring out the logistics, but, you know, potentially with like a scholarship or some sort of support for them that if they go through the program and commit to coming to work for Durham County Public Health, they'll receive some sort of uh, financial support or educational support. So hopefully that will start uh, to be explored. Uh, the county manager, I think, is going to be reaching out to you, Rod, to talk about it more, as well as uh, President Buxton from Durham Tech. And I think it's going to be really good uh, because now other departments within Durham County are also interested in having that type of development, like e emergency medical services also has programs that run through Durham Tech. So just wanted to give that update. Thank you so much, Commissioner Law. We look forward to those discussions. Very good. Attorney Wardell, thanks, uh, Commissioner Lung, for that. And uh, yeah. Attorney Wardell, yeah, there you go. Yes. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you, uh, Dr. Jackson, for the work that you did uh, as chair in 2022. Um, you did uh, a great job. Um, I also want to take this time to thank our uh, health director for doing a wonderful job in 2022. Uh, which was a challenging year for everyone. Uh, and he has done a great job. I wanted to take the opportunity to, you know, they say give people their flowers while you can, right? Uh, and so uh, I just wanted to uh, congratulate you all for doing a great job. Um, of course, uh, Dr. Brathwaite is, is the glue that's, uh, that's, that's always there uh, and all, all reliable. Uh, and uh, my brother, Dr. McDougal, uh, is going to do a wonderful job. I, I know that because I know him, uh, and I've been around long enough to see that Dr. Ray uh, will also be the glue uh, that keeps everything in, in, in line. So, uh, you know, this board is a wonderful board. I wanted to say thank you. Uh, to Spence, Spence and I have been together on this board. He's been there seven years, I've been there 10 years. Uh, Spence uh, has, has always been reliable uh, and uh, whatever your endeavors are, I wish you the best. Uh, but I will say that uh, I represent a number of boards and this is uh, the strongest board uh, that I am involved with, uh, dedicated and always uh, efficient and uh, getting the business done, the business of the county done. Uh, so uh, let's continue that, uh, that same uh, uh, direction and that same pattern. I think we've got great leadership uh, and I look forward to 2023. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much for that, Attorney Wardell. You know, you and I, we became uh, real good friends there for a while. <laughs> We're still good friends. We <laughs> 
I go, ooh, say, let me, ooh, let me, let me, let me, let me call Attorney Wardell. Let me, let me call. <laughs> uh, so thank well, you for all your help. And I would be remiss if I didn't give Dr. Braithwaite her kudos because she, that vice president position, um, and particularly this past year was quite a busy one and she was excellent, excellent. Yep, yeah. I don't know if y'all would have thought I looked so good if it wasn't for Dr. Braithwaite <laughs> really, really stepping up in her role as vice chair and chair of personnel and chair of finance. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Braithwaite. And we understand how busy you are with, with your private practice and all you did in the COVID space. Every time I turn around, she was at a COVID uh, function, running it, organizing them. So she has really contributed and has been great, great, great to work with. So thank you for making me look good. You have been great. And she too will stay on the board. So I think our board is just wonderful. So if we can find those two additional people that are as wonderful as you all are, we're good. We're good. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so we're ending a little under an hour. So we're also an efficient board, which I appreciate that people come prepared and ready to ask questions and have read the materials. So thank you so much for that. Just, just thank you. It's, it's been an honor. It's been an honor. I'd All also right. like to say thank you as well, guys. It's been fun and we'll still be doing some great work going yeah, forward. Right. <laughs> so if there is nothing else for the good of the board, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So oh. moved. All right, anybody opposed? Okay, <laughs> motion carries. We are adjourned. Oh, oh, please, please. Roslyn, now talk about some glue. Mm. Roslyn, in <laughs> case y'all don't know. <laughs> Roslyn is, Roslyn is, is it. If ever there was an it, she knows everything and she will not let you stray and do something crazy because she'll call me in a minute. Now, Dr. Jackson. Dr. Jones. Oh, okay, Raj. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. So she will not let you stray away and do anything crazy. So to the to the incoming chair and uh, vice chair, you will be in good hands with Rosalind. She is wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Roz. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate working with you. Thank you. It's been 35 good years. Wow. That's amazing. Yes. So you know now you can't ever leave because... Uh, Who's, who's going to uh, know anything? I'm going to keep my <laughs> mouth closed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you soon. Okay. Let's do, let's do a roll call. Let's do a roll call. Oh, roll all call. Right. Yeah, we got to vote to adjourn. Oh. Lord have mercy. Okay. Anybody opposed? Can we, oh, we have to do roll call. Okay, go ahead. All right. Dr. Jackson? Yes. Dr. Miller? Yes. Dr. McDougal? Yes. Mr. Curtis? Yes. Dr. Brightway? Yes. Dr. Orto? Yes. Dr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Commissioner Alam? Yes. Mr. Gregorio? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Now we stand adjourned. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you all so much. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>